2013, then CAR 2020 is for you. Because the statutory audits are mandatory for all the specified companies, and CAR 2020 is one of the formats for filing audit reports. Are you aware for the revised CAR 2020 or not? Hello everyone, my name is Prince Agarwal from WebTap. In this video, I am going to discuss the format of revised CAR 2020. A new format for audit reports announced on 25th Feb 2020 at a conference with NFRA National Financial Reporting Authority. What are the new changes in the auditor report and what are the differences between CARO 16 and CARO 20? So stay tuned and before starting this video, I request to all of you to please subscribe this YouTube channel Baptel Lectosoft to get the regular compliance updates. Let's start with the basic concept of CARO applicability. For this, I am taking you to my screen for better understanding. Let's start with the meaning of CARO. So CARO stands with Companies Auditors Report Order 2020. CARO 2020 is a new format for issue of auditor reports in case of statutory audits of companies under Companies Act 2013. Applicability of CARO 2020. CARO 2020 shall apply to every company including a foreign companies as defined under Section 2, Clause 42 of Companies Act 2013. Non-applicability of CARO 2020 CARO 2020 is not applicable to the following five companies. First, if it is a banking company. Second, insurance company. Third, section in company. Four, one person company. And fifth, it is a small company. CARO 2020 is also not applicable to the private company if it meets the following condition. First, it is not a subsidiary or holding company of public company. Paid up capital and reserves and surplus do not exceed 1 crore rupees as on balance sheet date. Second, borrowing from any bank or financial institution doesn't exceed 1 crore rupees at any point of time during the financial year. Third, total revenue doesn't exceed 10 crore rupees during the financial year as per the financial statement. If a private company meets the following conditions, then CARO 2020 is not also applicable to these private companies. Now let's understand the difference between CARO 20 and CARO 16. So CARO 2020 is applicable for the financial year commencing on and after 1st April 2020. So as on date, the CARO 2020 is applicable to all the applicable companies and CARO 16 was applicable for the financial year commencing on and after 1st April 2015. So now the CARO 2020 is applicable. First clause is fixed assets and PPE. So in CARO 2020, we have to ensure that whether the company is maintaining a proper record showing full particulars including the details of plant, property and equivalent. B. Whether the company is maintaining a proper record showing all the particulars of intangible assets. So now change is here that fixed assets is replaced by PP that is property, plant and equivalent and intangible assets has been reported separately in CARO 2020. Second change in clause number one is reporting of title deed. Whether the title deed of immobile property are held in the name of the company, if not, then provide the details in the prescribed format like description of property, gross carrying value held in the name of whether the promoter director or their relative or employee period held reason for not being held in the name of company next change in clause number one is detail of evaluation of pp must be reported if there is any revaluation of value of assets then it should be reported next change is that any Benami proceeding initiated to be reported by the management or not that auditor has to ensure. Second clause is inventory. Here the auditor has to ensure that coverage and procedure of physical verification by the management shall be disclosed or not. Any differences beyond 10% to be disclosed by the management or not. New subclause inserted in clause number 2 that is inventory. If the company has any working capital facility against current assets in exceed of 5 crore rupees at any time during the year, then auditor has to confirm whether the quarterly submission made to the lender 
and conformity with the books of accounts or not. Clause number 3 is details of investments guarantee, security or advances or loans granted. Here in Cardo 2020, this clause is now includes investments, provisions of loans or advances in nature of loans or grantee or provided security that the aggregate amount during the year and balance sheet outstanding at the balance sheet to subsidiary joint ventures and associates second to parties other than the subsidiary joint ventures and associates clause number seven is statutory reuse just a drafting change to include gst goods and service tax in the statutory reuse and reporting of disputes of all statutory reuse is included clause number eight is unrecorded income new clause has been inserted in Cardo 2020 Auditor to report whether previously unrecorded income has been surrendered or disclosed as income during the year in the tax assessment under the Income Tax Act 1961 has been properly recorded in the books during the year. Clause number 9 is default in repayment of borrowing. Here the auditor has to ensure the following point whether the company is de declared willful defaulter by any bank, financial institution or other lender. If the loan were not applied for the purpose for which they were obtained, then the amount of loan and the purpose for which it has been taken shall be disclosed. If fund raised on the short term basis has been utilized for your long term purpose, then the nature and the amount of same shall be disclosed. Details of fund borrowed by the holding company for the purpose and obligation of group entities is required to be disclosed. If loans are raised during the year on the pledge of security held in the group companies, then details thereof are to be disclosed along with the details of default in the company and defaulted in repayment of such loans. Clause number 10 is fund raise and utilization. Clause 14 of Caro 16 is merged with clause 10 of Caro 20. Here, whether company raised any money by way of initial public offer or further public offer and term loan were applied for the purpose for which those were raised. If not, the details together with delays or default and subsequent ratification if any has been made then applicable to be reported. Whether the company has made any preferential allotment, private placement or shares or fully partly convertible debenture during the year gender the review and if so as the whether the requirement of section number 42 of the Companies Act 2013 has been compliant with and the amount raised has been used for the purpose for which the fund has been raised. If not, provide the detail in respect of amount involved and the nature of known compliance. Clause number 11 is floored by company or on the company. Now the auditor has to report it any fraud by the company or on the company has to be done. Earlier, auditor had to report only the fraud done by its officer or employees. If the reporting of fraud has been filed by the auditor under section 143 clause 12 of Companies Act 2013, then such reporting has to be disclosed here also. Auditor has to disclose if he has considered any whistleblower complaint received by the company during the year. Clause number 12 is compliance by Nidhi Company. Additional subclause has been inserted which require reporting on default in payment of interest on deposit or repayment thereof for any period which details thereof. Reporting of internal audit. New clause insert in Taro 2020. First, the company has an internal audit system which is measurable with the size and nature of, of its business. Second, the report of internal auditors for the period gender audit were considered by the statutory auditor. 
Clause number 16 is non-banking financial companies. Here the auditor has to ensure that whether non-banking financial activities or housing financial activity are connected without a valid certificate of registration from RBI, whether the companies is being called investing companies fulfilling the classification criteria laid down by the RBI. Clause number 17 is cash clauses. It is a new inserted clause in Carlo 2020. Here, the auditor has to ensure that whether the company has incurred any cash losses in the financial year and in the immediately preceding financial year, if so, state the amount of debt cash losses. Clause number 18 is Regination of Statutory Auditor. It is also a new insert clause in Carlo 2020. Here we have to ensure that the any regulation of the statutory auditor has been done during the year. Whether the auditor has taken into the account of problem, protest or issues brought by the departing auditors. Clause number 19 is materiality uh, certainty in relation to financial assets and liabilities. It is also a new inserted clause in Carlo 2020. Auditor is required to give his opinion that no material uncertainty exists as on date of the audit. Clause 20 is reporting on CSR compliance. It is also a new inserted clause in Carlo 2020, which requires the auditors to report on whether unexpent CSR amount has been transferred to a fund as specified in schedule number 7 where no project specified is carried out or assigned or a special designated bank account related to the ongoing project has been opened or not. Clause number 21 that is the last clause of Carlo 2020 is about reporting on consolidated financial statement. It is also a new insert clause in Carlo 2020. Here, Disclosure is required on whether there has been any qualification or adverse remark by the respective auditor in Caro reports of companies including in the consolidated financial statement if yes, the details of the companies and the paragraph numbers of the Caro report containing the qualifications or adverse remark are to be in indicated. New insert clause in Caro 2020 that reporting on managerial nomination has been deleted in Caro 2020 in order to avoid duplication as same is already covered in the main report. So in Caro 2020, there is no requirement of separate manager nomination disclosure. Earlier in Caro 1618, that was required. Now we are discussing the following clauses where there is no change in card of first loans investment guarantees and security section number 185 186 of companies act 2013 that is clause number four of card 2020 here is no change second is deposit that is clause number five of card 2020 third is cost audits that's clause number six of our card 2020 here is no changes. Next is compliance with transaction with related parties clause number 13 of Caro 2020. And last clause is no cash dealings with director clause number 15 of Caro 2020. These are the five clauses. Here there is no changes in Caro 2020 and as it is seen as it was in Caro 2020. Caro 16. Hence, we have covered all the important points relating to Caro 16 and 20 changes. I hope you have understood that a new format of auditor's report is introduced to put a strict check on survival transaction entered into a company by which a close link with the solvency financial links existing in the company. Share this video with your friends and colleagues for the better understanding and sharing a link in the description below. If you found this video helpful then visit the link mentioned in the description below 
and let us know in the comment section also you can comment if you have any doubts give a thumbs up and subscribe to our youtube channel next tuesday we will come up with another interesting video to improve the compliance for you till then stay safe stay tuned